Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I wanted to talk about a policy that EVGA has regarding our amazing warranty and also what they've done with some of their manufacturing and how these two policies, again, if they had one policy by itself, it wouldn't be that horrible. But when you combine these two policies, you end up with a user experience that is just going to absolutely destroy customers of power supplies. If you buy EVGA power supplies, I think this is a very important thing to pay attention to. I'll link everything down below. This user contacted me and he also posted on Reddit because he thought it was something that I would take interest in. And again, I do because I actually just set up a server with an EVGA power supply. And luckily when I did so, I rolled the dice and I got something I wanted, unlike what he got. So what am I talking about here? EVGA creates modular power supplies you know, the type of power supply where you don't have the wires stuck to the power supply, you can unplug them. So if you're only using one GPU instead of two, if you're using just an NVMe drive instead of a bunch of SATA drives, you don't have to have all these wires dangling out that you have to find out how to cable manage that are not actually plugged into anything, which is pretty cool. The problem is that while the other end of the power cable is standardized, the ends that plugs into the power supply uh, is not. And now again, it's, it's one thing if it was, but this, it's one thing if this was not standardized by company, like if Antec has a different pinout than Seasonic, who has a different pinout than PC Power and Cooling, who has a different pinout than Corsair, who has a different pinout than OCZ. You could probably tell how old I am by some of the companies I'm even mentioning here. You get the idea. That would be something that I could understand, even if I don't like. Because to be honest with you, the fact that we're like at least 20 years into modular power supplies being a thing, and that that is not standardized, that, that just seems incredibly massively stupid to me. That should, like, we're far enough in that that should be somewhat standardized. But if, okay, whatever, it's not standardized by manufacturer. What's really messed up is when it's not standardized within the model of power supply coming from this company. So if, if I buy an EVGA Model 2 power supply, and I buy another EVGA Model 2 power supply, I shouldn't expect that between these two devices that have identical model numbers and a cable, again, this is not like some internal thing that's not user serviceable. We're talking about the cables that you're expected to plug into the device and then plug into your computer. The stuff that you as a user are expected to use are gonna have such different pinouts that if I use the cable from this one, same model on this power supply that I'm gonna be sending 12 volts to the three volt rail on my devices. That's very, very bad. Again, if you're a person that uses RAID 5 or RAID 6 for backups or anything like that, you may think, well, I have three redundancy drives here, I'm good. What if you plug every single one of those drives into a power supply that sends 12 volts to the three volt rail of all of them? Now, essentially, it's really, you know, it's sad, but this person, if they were running a server, they could have literally killed every single one of their drives and every single one of their redundancy drives with one decision. Now, the reason that this person got screwed is because of an EVGA policy that they have regarding cables. Their policy is do not send your cables with the power supply. If you send us cables with the power supply, we are not going to send these cables back to you. You need to not send the cables. So naturally what a user is gonna do if they send the power supply for RMA, they are just gonna take the cables out, they're gonna put them in their box, and when they receive the RMA power supply, they are going to plug in the cables that they already had. Because EVGA was not supplying them with new cables, fine, and they were told them to keep the original cables. The problem is if I am RMAing a power supply that has pinout one within this model of power supply, and then you send me a replacement power supply that has pinout two, when I plug my cables back in, as you instructed me to that I saved, I am then gonna send 12 volts to the three volt rail on all of my devices. And this is something that in my opinion is just massively incompetent. Again, the first thing that I would ask is why change the pinout at all within the same model? Like here, just what's the point of that? And B, if you are going to do that, why is this not plastered everywhere on your RMA page? Why is this not something that you're informing every single one of your users of? And again, this cannot be some page 21 of the EULA shit. This needs to be something that is in size 72 font everywhere because of how important it is and more importantly, how unexpected it is. I use EVGA power supplies at my store. So again, at the computers that we build at the store for you know user workstations, PC 3000 machines, all that type of stuff, I tend to want to use the same motherboard, same CPU, same RAM, same GPU, same everything else, the power supply, because the, the, again, it's the same thing with the soldering stations. Like we all, you know, every desk is like a standard. We all use these tips, these irons. And the reason for it is because it makes it easy if something dies or if something goes wrong, uh, it's very easy to know, okay, this is, I can just grab this part from this and put it over here. It's just easy to have a standard. Now I decided to use an EVGA power supply for my one of my home builds. And I just, I, I've moved three times in the past two years. I just didn't save all the cabling, but I know we have a lot of extra cabling at work for stuff that wasn't used. 
So I thought, okay, I can go to the store, I can grab this EVGA power supply cable because I have the same model at home. And, and again, thank God, like I was lucky enough that I rolled the dice and it was it worked. But I would I assumed again as a professional technician that has been doing this work for 15 years, component level board repair, data recovery. I figured that if you're selling me this model of power supply from this company. And I buy another of the exact same model, like again, no difference in revision, that's obvious, no difference in addition, that the wires from this one will be safe to use from the wires of that one, and that you will not swap 12 volts and three volts. And again, even if you did that, that would be okay if when you were RMAing things, you did not tell the customer, don't send in your cables and uh, not, or not tell them, throw away your old cables. So this person over here wound up having an experience where they killed every drive in their system and uh, EVGA is saying, okay, you know, like we're not covering the data under, under warrant. We can't cover your data. Um, we can't be, take responsibility for your data. And I agree with this. I agree to a point and I want to go over what I agree with and what I don't. So he says... After an extremely frustrating day of troubleshooting, I figured I'd show my story. For a bit of backstory, I built a new PC a year ago, which included a new EVGA GQ 1000 watt gold power supply. The coil one was horrible, worse than anything I had ever heard from any other PC in the past. I sent it at my expense to EVGA under warranty as it was brand new. As per their instructions, I sent only the power supply unit itself and no cables. They were very clear in their instructions. Keep all accessories as you will only be receiving a power supply in return. No problem. I set the cables aside for when I would get the power supply back from them. In the meantime, I reused my older Corsair power supply as it got the job done. A few weeks later, I received the RMA power supply from EVGA, but life got in the way so it sat in the box until yesterday when my Corsair unit started getting noisy enough to bug me. I pulled the Corsair out along with all of its cables as I am very aware you cannot mix power supply cables. Again, to be clear, just a note, I didn't even know that. I, I figured, again, 20 plus years of modular PC power supplies, this is a, somebody would have thought, let's standardize not just the end that plugs into the components, let's come up with a standard for the end that plugs into the PSU. The fact that that is not standardized to me is just like, I, it's mind bogglingly stupid that literally 20 years into this, that that's not a thing. I feel like, I, I, don't, I don't understand what the limitation is there in making that a standard or a thing. But anyway, back to this. Because to, to be clear, I, I actually have done that. And like, again, I, I, I won the lotto with that and that I haven't killed anything yet. Uh, thank God with my own stuff. This is why, again, you want me to fix your laptop motherboard? You want me to get your data off a dead drive? By all means. You want me to build you a desktop computer? It's going to come out worse than The Verge. There's a reason I don't do that. Uh, I, I stay in my lane. Anyway, I plugged everything in and tried to boot up the PC. Then I opened up the EVGA box and grabbed the cables that go along with it, which I had set aside and labeled previously. I plugged everything in and tried to boot up the PC with no luck. Only a click, which I figured may be an overload protection circuit. I immediately had to double check to see if I mixed any cables somehow. But everything was correct and only the EVGA GQ cables that came with my power supply were used. At the first step of troubleshooting, I disconnected the SATA power from my SATA hard drives. And just like that, it booted up completely fine. Once I had isolated that the SATA power was the issue, I decided to check the voltages with the multimeter. To my surprise, they were all completely wrong. 12 volts where 3 volts was supposed to be, nothing where 5 volts was supposed to be, and so on. I tried a different SATA power cable from the same matching set, and it was the exact same. At this point, I call EVGA. To their credit, I was able to speak to someone within a matter of minutes, which can't be said for most manufacturers. After explaining the situation and the tech pulling up my RMA file, he knew what the problem was. He notified me that at some point, the pin layout of these power supplies was changed. I was never told this when I received my power supply back from warranty. And clearly my cables were incompatible with the power supply now, with no way of knowing other than by checking by multimeter, which again, is very, very unreasonable to expect a consumer to do when they are um, uh, putting back together a desktop computer. These are the type of things that you just, like, it, it's, it's, again, it's, it's something that you don't know to check that I would just be being a giant dickhead for, for not telling you. Like, if there, if I had a carpet, if I had a carpet in a flat floor, and there was a section of my home where if you walked into this, like, there is no floor under it, I could tell you, you should have checked, you should have knocked before taking the step and been slow, or, like, you know, or it's hey, like, hey, if I have a giant trap, door in my house that I've invited you to, maybe I should not be a dickhead and not tell you that, that that's there. It, it really is one of these things where you can blame the customer for not checking, but who the hell checks that when there is no real like reason to, they've never had a reason to, nobody's ever done something like this before, and it's just, it's just not something that you're used to. The tech told me that he believed it was only SATA power that was changed. 
Well, that, that's great. The only thing that we change is the thing that's going to kill the stuff that holds your data. Which would make sense as my PC was able to boot just fine without SATA power disconnected from the drives. He said he was sending me a new set of cables and that would fix the issue. While that should be the case, what a horrible decision to change a power supply pin layout within the same product with only way to know being manufacturing date with absolutely no notice. And by following EVGA's own protocol of not sending in power supply cables or a warranty claim, you're essentially screwed. I thank the technician for his help and acknowledge that it wasn't his fault personally that this happened and I'll wait for the new cables to arrive, once again using my old Corsair in the meantime. I also appreciate him not screaming at the customer service person, because very often the person you're speaking on the phone with the customer service was not the dickhead that made this decision to have this horrible manufacturing change without informing you, nor is that the person that really is, is saying, like, oh, by the way, you're on your own. It's usually somebody higher up, and I appreciate him not screaming at the customer service person. I would have been livid at this, and it would have been taken a lot of self-control and time to realize, yeah, I should, again, it's not you, and just be able to kind of keep that inside. All right, so after removing the EVGA and putting the Corsair back in, once again, the problem really showed itself. All of my SATA drives were gone. They were fried, 22 terabytes of storage, gone. I double and triple check using a different PC as the test PC with the drives even, but they were dead. Thankfully, I do have cloud backups, but my wife and I did lose both our entire day's work as well as the most recent backup from the morning. I have sent the drives to a third-party repair company to replace the controller boards. By the way, rossmangroup.com, we do do data recovery. I do not sponsor anything else on this channel. You will not see ads for other bullshit inside of my videos because no company in their right mind would sponsor this channel for very very obvious reasons if you watch the videos on a regular basis, which is why we, we have, have no sponsors. We are not, this is not a brand-friendly channel. So I will sponsor my own brand. We do do this type of work if you'd like it, and you can check it out at rossmangroup.com. Anyway, after a back-and-forth conversation with EVGA, I was told that I should deal with the hard drive manufacturers to have the drives replaced. Instead, they have told me I've never encountered a warranty that offers to cover loss of data or the cost related to recovery of data. And to the letter of warranty terms, we technically don't cover any losses or damage incurred by our products either. Okay, so there's, there's a couple of things to go into here. Now, again, when it comes to data recovery, yeah, like, again, I, you, you, you got to have backups. And, like, I get it. You know, it sucks. You weren't expecting this to happen. I can't be accountable for your data. Uh, you know, the reason we have all the clauses in my work contract that we do is because there'll always be that person that says, like, I had 8,000 Bitcoin on this phone you were recovering, and now it only has four. And it's like, no, man, just, just no. Like, I, I cannot put myself legally in a situation where you can claim without evidence that you had 8,000 Bitcoin, and after I recovered it, you only have eight. That's one of the reasons that anytime somebody says that I have crypto that I would like you to recover, I refer them to my good friend, Jessa Jones, so that she could deal with the customer service nightmare that I've had happen almost 100% of the time that somebody says they want me to recover crypto, because every single goddamn time, they pretend that they had 80 times as much as they did. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. It's literally not even worth the money. Just go somewhere else. But anyway, the point being, it is very difficult to um, to cover data. Now, what they could do is they could cover the drives that were destroyed by their stuff, but there's two things that make this very difficult. Uh, again, this is where having a smaller company makes things easier than a bigger company. So for instance, in the early days with my company, if somebody called me and told me that this happened, and I could see like 100% that it was my fault, it was my mistake, and I would ask, okay, like what happened? And they, you know, maybe let's say $300 of stuff or $600 of product product was destroyed, you know, like, I can afford that. I don't have an official policy, but I can afford to replace that. Like, I kind of screwed up. Fine. I'll, I'll take care of you as a customer. This is something that I think would be the right thing to do. But realistically speaking, I completely understand from a practical point of view why a larger company can't do this for two reasons. One, there is absolutely no way to tell when you have a drive that this was killed by uh, me versus something else. Like there's no way for you to tell that that was plugged into this rather than a Corsair power supply with the wrong cable. And then you get yourself into a situation where people might just be able to, again, like they have broken gear that died for some other reason and they're sending it back to you claiming that it was your fault because you switched the pin out. And if you were to actually put that in your policy, that is a very easy way to go bankrupt. Again, now second part, again, as a small business, back when I wasn't famous on YouTube, back when I had maybe three or four employees, I could, you know, reasonably speaking, I know that this is not something where people are going to talk about it publicly because I'm just not that large a business. So I could afford to take that risk. Like, I am taking a risk. I am trusting you. I am trusting you that you're not sending me drives that you killed yourself somewhere else in claiming that it was my supply that did it. Technically, my power supply that I sent you has a different pinout than the cables you have. And technically, that's my fault. That being said, I have no way to know if all these products that you're asking me to cover 
are products that my power supply killed. There's really no way to do that. So I am trusting you on that. And if, if this is something where it's not a mass market problem and it's something that I probably only messed up for two or four repairs, I can afford to do that because it's a low amount and I know it only happened to a small number of people. And again, I don't, I'm not large enough as a company back then that people are going to be talking about this in forums. Once you're a very large company, you have to worry about people figuring out how to get around your systems. Because anytime you have a system in place and you're a large enough company, people are going to talk amongst themselves on forums, IRC channels, Usenet, if, they're, if their hair is all gray, in all seriousness, they're going to talk and they're going to say, here's how you get around it. Or if you say X, Y, and Z, you can trick them into giving you a discount they didn't give to somebody else. And while I can technically provide that level of service to one or two people, if I open the gate to the point where I'm so trusting that I'm applying this to everybody, now I open the door to genuinely bankrupting myself. Because what if everybody that bought this power supply were to say, like, this motherboard died and it's because of you, and this power, this GPU died and it's because of you? Did that GPU die because you had it running, you know, Bitcoin mining for four years in, a, in Texas summer with no air conditioning? Or did it die because you sent the wrong voltage to this? Now I know what you're thinking. Well, you'd be able to tell if there was a burn mark. And again, this is one of those things where maybe I just take a GPU that I had that died from some other means. I send 12 volts to a 5 volt or 3 volt rail so it looks like it blew up and then I send it back to you. Th this is a really difficult situation to be in for EVGA because they're either going to, again, it's really difficult because you can only swing in one direction. You could either be too nice and trust all of your customers, or you could be too mean and not cover it at all. You're never gonna get that middle ground because you can't prove it. And they're a big enough company that if they were to start replacing every single device that somebody said broke because of them, they really do open themselves up to this liability, particularly if they make it as a policy. They put themselves in a situation where like somebody like me could go to my closet of 18 years of hardware that's all broken that I've saved, and every single one that's out of warranty and just say, yeah, I plugged this into your power supply, this died. Yeah, I plugged this into your power supply, this died, pay me. And again, it wouldn't really be hard to just take a bench power supply and like, you know, ground 12 volts and bzzzt, bzzzt, bzzzt. Uh, you know, th this is something that, that can be done and it would really, they really have no way to tell if it was their power supply or somebody else's uh, that did it. So this is one of those instances where if they actually want to take accountability and responsibility, which I think is the right thing to do, they put themselves in a situation where they just open themselves up to getting completely bankrupted by people that are being dishonest, that they have no way to tell whether or not they're being dishonest. So it's a very difficult position to be in. And it's one of those things where as you get to be a bigger company, you don't have the luxury of doing some of these things. Like there are some things like this that I did even back in 2012 and 2013 that I fundamentally cannot do in 2024. This company has such a large image. It has such a reputation. So many people know that it exists around the world that if I were to have some sort of vulnerability or Achilles heel in this area, it would be very easy to just empty out my entire bank account by just like finding a way to scam the system. So it's a very difficult thing to do and it's a very difficult thing to make a policy on. It really does have to be this case by case basis. Do I trust this person? And then even uh, in that case, am I making the right decision? based on and you're not going to make that all the time as a large company this is again at the end of the day like i feel bad for this customer because they had all of their drives destroyed and again this has absolutely nothing to do with them being an idiot i would have never known that the same model power supply if i bought two of them would have ra radically different pinouts and no alert on them. This is some shit that needs to be printed on the box. It needs to be printed on the power supply. It needs to be printed on their website. If I have two products of the exact same model, except one is going to be sending 12 volts to a three volt rail, or the other is going to send three volts to a 12 volt rail, uh, if you, and the cables look the same and the device looks the same, like it's it. The responsibility, in my opinion, is on me to to make. <laughs> make that as obvious as possible everywhere that I can. And it's really, it, it, this is just something that makes me personally, I would, again, well, I completely understand why they're not covering the drives for this customer. I'm not saying it's right, but I understand it. I would also, in, like, I would just never purchase an EVGA product again. I'm looking like every single GPU that I have at home is an EVGA, and also every single power supply I have at home is an EVGA uh, but but no, that, that that's it. Like the, when you make design decisions like this, you're telling me that you it, don't have um, the competence necessary to be creating hardware that I put into my devices. Because like, again, I am the type of person. I just have a giant box with all my stuff in it, and I assume if I've bought three of the supplies, eh, you know, again, it's the same thing. Let me just grab a cable from this. Uh, but essentially, what you, what you're doing here is you're actually 
you're punishing me for having loyalty because had I purchased different supplies from different people, I would have put the different supplies into different areas. I would have had the cables in different boxes. But because I decided to be loyal to you and buy four or six or eight of your supplies, which I think is a good thing to, for, to be doing for with a company, be loyal, continuously buy their products and put, you know, put all the stuff in the box, I'm actually wind up getting punished for my loyalty because I assume that you are competent enough as a manufacturer to not miss up the pinouts. And like, I, I honestly here again, I really can't prescribe any course of action because again, like usually I like to do these videos and say, here's what the company should do. Here's the right thing for them to do. In this case, even with Apple, I will say like recall this product, cover this particular flaw under warranty because you know what you did. But even then there is a limit of liability. Here, there is genuinely no way to limit the liability because once you open the floodgate, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can like just go to a, a recycling bin and just send 12 volts to everything on the three volt rail and claim that this broke in my computer and wind up scamming EVGA. So I understand the situation they're in. And again, for me, the answer is just, I personally would not feel comfortable buying their products after this if this is the way they deal with their RMA process. And more importantly, this is the way that they deal with informing their customers of very important information. And just sad because EVGA used to be known as a top tier manufacturer with great customer service. Again, as he said, they answered the phone very, very quickly and you very quickly got a technician on the line rather than having to wait 30 minutes to talk to somebody that does, is reading off of a script and telling you to restart the device to make it work again, similar to people to, uh, saying to make Wire Plumber work again on the latest version of Ubuntu, which is why you probably hear the fan in the background. By the way, that doesn't work. You still have 100% CPU usage. I'm getting rid of Wire Plumber at the moment that I'm done with this video. But it's Linux. It's not supposed to work. But in all seriousness, I wouldn't want to buy an EVGA product after this. I wouldn't feel safe doing it. Uh, I, 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 would feel as, I would feel as unsafe buying an EVGA product after this, almost as unsafe as certain relationship counselors and psychologists would feel if somebody did not pay for their, their $9 panini. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And just remember, to be clear, RAID, uh, you know, any sort of redundancy system like that, ZFS, those are not backups. They are not. That is a system, but that is not a backup because it is very easy. Again, in this case, I have a system at home with 12 drives and I have four of them as redundancy drives. And if I were using a different EVGA power supply than the one that I have at home and I didn't roll the dice right, I would have killed every single one of them in one go. RAID by itself, None of the, that's not a backup. It's a system to create a little bit more redundancy within one system. Like backup is like different machines somewhere else, different system, different hardware, everything else, different location. That's not a backup. It's just really important to drive that point home so that less of you need to pay for my services, which you can find at rossmangroup.com if you do need data recovery. By the way, again, we do hard drive data recovery. We have a great team for that. Chris is amazing. We have a solid state drive data recovery. We do micro SD card data recovery. If you've broken your SD card or your micro SD card in half, I'll include a video below. Chris literally puts this shit back together. He's an absolute genius. And I have continuously invested in him uh, to take, to, you know, wh whether it's courses, experimentation, equipment, whatever the hell you want. I've been very encouraging of that over the past several years. And he just continues to impress me with what he learns on a regular basis. And he, honestly, I, 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 I don't know how else to say it. He's kind of a, he's, he kind of is an inspiration to me to like be better at my field and better at my craft. And I see how dedicated he is to his. I'm happy to have him here. Anyway, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.